governing online posts, cyberbullying, sexual imagery come into place. The aim to make Britain the safest place in the world for children and young people to access and use the internet. But how will the, news law will, how will the new laws work and what impact will they have and how can they be policed? Well, we can find out now because uh, the Secretary of State for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, Nadine Doris, who's been instrumental in getting these laws passed, joins us now. Thank you for coming in today. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so Good let's, morning. Go, let's go through what, what they are then. What, what is in the bill and what was your aim? So my aim was simply to make the internet in the UK the safest place in the world for children and vulnerable young people to go online. So that was the, the core objective. Obviously, that's, that's been work that's been in progress for five years. And when I arrived at the department, I realised that the bill in the form that it was in just wouldn't achieve those aims and objectives. It just wasn't fit for purpose to, to be taken to Westminster. And so uh, the officials in DCMS and I have been working daily, day and night, literally, for six months mm. to get the bill into a place where it would do that where it would actually make the internet the safest place in the world for our children in this country to go online. And it is world beating, it's world leading. The rest of the world is watching to see what we do. Mm. And we will be the first people ever to bring in regulations and legislation which will achieve that and hold those who run these online platforms mm. are criminally liable and impose fines if they don't agree to the, to the legislation which we pass. All right, so, I mean, it's, it's very noble. Um, uh, the internet is huge. Uh, and so mm -hmm. to, to try and regulate or to police is not going to be any, an easy thing. Um, we'll come to the algorithms in just a mm -hmm. moment because I think that's the sort of crux of the thing. Let's talk about, first of all, some of the bits that we've picked out in the, in the bill. So cyber flashing. Uh, that's uh, involving offenders sending uh, unsolicited sexual images to people via social media or dating apps. Um, they can also, of course, be sent by Bluetooth. Um, and uh, research from 2020 found that 76% of girls uh, aged 12 to 18 have been sent unsolicited nude images of boys and men. How are you going to stop that? So it will be... The platforms can vary easily. So we're talking about the main platforms that co cause the most harm. So we're talking about... Platforms like uh, Meta, Facebook as was, Twitter, Instagram and others, where the most harm we know, research shows us, is caused. And those, those platforms have the tools very easily and the technology to be able to pick up those images, identify them and remove them. And I'll give you an example. YouTube actually does that already now. So, you know, there is, it's very difficult for, for any children or young people to access pornography, for anyone to access pornography on YouTube, because they will tell you, we have the tools very easy, it's the easiest thing in the world to pick up those, in, those, those images. Mm. And so what we're doing via our risk assessments, I don't want to get into the technical detail because I think it will turn your viewers off, but we, we have a way in the bill, uh, using the regulator Ofcom, to ensure that those platforms use those tools, identify those images and remove them. Now you said in your introduction, it's about the algorithms and you're absolutely right. It's the algorithms which cause the harm. Mm. So what this bill will compel those online platforms to do is to expose their algorithms to our regulator and so that they can pick up where the harm is happening and hold those platforms to we, account. We've, we've, um, there are so much to go through, um, but, uh, but you mentioned the bill. algorithms again. It, yeah, uh, is, is the fact that, I mean, many... Um, Journalists are saying those that once you start tinkering with those or force them to start tinkering with those algorithms It could hamper free speech that there could be issues in the way genuine uh, Robust news is actually reported and how you can search for it not necessarily on their own platforms But if you if you put a search in it could prevent that anyone who has I mean I've, I've got you know friends who've, who've who their internet has been taken down for absolutely no reason whatsoever because of an algorithm uh, and, it tri and it tripped them up. Trying to contact these companies to say, what you've just done is A, unfair, or I've just seen this and it should be taken down. They don't listen, they're, they're massive. You're absolutely right. And those platforms have all the powers in the world that they want right now to remove any journalistic content they want to. They don't have to respond to you. They don't have to tell you why they've removed that content and they don't have to put it back up again, even if they do listen to your complaint. So two main points to your, and there are lots of points to answer your question with, but I'll just go to two main ones now. The first one is that this bill 
carves out journalists completely. So we're not, we're not legislating for what journalists put online. We, I'm a protector of free speech in this country. Anything a journalist, a recognised news outlet or a journalist wants to, to put on the internet should be there, if it's legal, of course, and, and everything journalists write is. No responsible journalist posts terrorist content or anything that's illegal. But what this bill does, if those algorithms and if those platforms remove something which a journalist or a news outlet puts, puts online, A, they have to t notify that journalist that they're about to remove that content, they have to say why they're going to remove it, and they have to they give the journalist the right to appeal, and the content remains online while that happens. So they have a process that they have to go through now before they remove any journalistic content. Whereas before, as you say, journalists, lots of, I mean, talk radio had something taken down recently. You know, the process for asking why it was taken down, why it was remained down, and to get it back up again mm. is just either not there or very opaque. One of the other things you've... We've, uh, many people watch The Tinder Swindler um, and, uh, and the Romance Fraud. Uh, this is a, another area of the bill. Um, a victim duped into a relationship with someone and then tricked into handing over money. How, how does the law aim to put a stop to that? So, exactly, and it's fraud and it's online fraud. So, you know, what happens offline now, which is illegal, will, when this bill passes, be illegal online. So it's not just romance frauds and tender swindler, as you say, it's also fraud scam advertising, which absolutely destroys people's lives. Fraud advertising, where people are tricked or conned into various schemes, which we know are scams, hand over their life savings, join really scam, non-existent, dodgy investment schemes, all of that is also illegal now online. And we've, you know, what we've been doing over the last six months, or what I've been doing and uh, my officials is listening. So, you know, I knew when I arrived, it's very difficult. Martin Lewis has, you know, an amazing campaign on online fraud. It was actually almost impossible when I arrived to get that included in the bill. For many reasons I won't go into, technical, legal, to do with the scope of the bill. But after six months, we've managed to get it in. Mm. And, and romance fraud is in there as well. So that will be illegal. Nadine, I've actually been using one of these adverts and I saw the other day they're actually using Holly. And so yeah. we will not see these sort of adverts nope. anymore because they're for subscription diet pills. Yeah. So they will not be available. They we will, will be illegal. To... I think many of Online platforms will not be allowed Bitcoin, to carry those. Never do. Yeah, yeah. But so how, would, how are you going to police this? So, again, this is quite technical, I apologise. So, Try to make it not. <laughs> so, <I'm going> to... <laughs> So we have Can a regulator. We, we have a regulator, Ofcom. Yeah. Ofcom will be doing something called risk assessments and horizon scanning of the platforms. When they see that any of those, they will go straight to the platforms and say they will say to the platforms, "You are at risk. You have to carry out your own risk assessments. With you are carrying now these online fraud scams. You need to do your risk assessment. If they continue to carry them, Ofcom will be able to find them 10% of their global annual turnover. Mm. Or Individual named members of the platforms will be criminally liable. Are, are, the, are Ofcom getting extra staff to do oh, this? I mean, had, looking, looking, yeah. at, looking at the figures here, we've talked about cyber flashing. Uh, in 2020, 76% of girls 12 to 18 had, had received those unsolicited nude images. Romance fraud, 5,727 instances of, uh, of that fraud in, in the UK. The, the numbers are vast. That's just two areas that we've looked at. The numbers are vast. The police can't do anything about that. So you so can't go to the police. It. No. So, so have you got extra staff to deal so with this? So Ofcom have been at this work already for over a year. We've been preparing for this bill. They've already been carrying out the risk assessments of the online platforms. We know where the harms take place. So we already know this information. And, you know, the interesting thing is, Philip, is we're doing this work. We've put huge amounts of money into this, huge amounts of resources, not only in terms of staff and my officials who, you know, I just can't credit enough the amount of work they've done, how hard they've worked in the past six months, not just those people, but there's lots of people have been working very hard how on many this. Extra, those how many extra people have you hired? Those platforms could take down those harmful algorithms right now. Mm. They don't need the bill. They don't need all this work. They don't need all this money spending in Ofcom. They could actually do this right now themselves, and they do in other jurisdictions. So how many extra people have you hired? Okay, I can't give you an, an absolute number. Ofcom have been doing this work for over a year. They've, they've had a very considerable amount of extra resources um, in funding to put people in place. So they're our official regulator. We don't do the, the risk assessments within the department. 
we make the laws, off come the regulator, they carry out the work. And do you genuinely think that you will get the assistance of these big platforms? So we have to because it will be, it's not the assistance, they will be legally obliged to yeah. abide by this or we can ultimately, the ultimate sanction is, we can block those platforms in the UK. But you know, we don't want to get there. Can I just say, make this point actually? We don't want to get there because these platforms also do a lot of good. You know, through the pandemic, and we've particularly seen it over the past two weeks with Ukraine and Russia, yeah. there's a lot of good they do as well. When you say you could block the, pl the platform. So we have various sanctions. The sanctions we have in the bill, if platforms don't comply to what the bill asks them to do are as follows. 10% fine of, of global annual turnover. That's a lot of money. Criminal liability for named individuals, that means prison sentences, or ultimately, if they stubbornly refuse to comply with the bill, we can block those platforms if what, we want to. Shutting down Facebook? We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because we recognise, you know, particularly with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, they've been a force for good. And so we want to work with these platforms. That's, isn't that quite a scary start to the whole so, thing? You start thinking, right, OK, well, don't like what Twitter's doing, don't like what Facebook is doing, I'll tell you what's scary. Let's, let's shut them I'll down. Tell sounds you, a bit Russian to me. I'll tell you what's scary. Algorithms that direct young people into suicide chat rooms, into self-harm chat rooms, into anorexia chat rooms. A 22% increase in young women the last quarter of last year suffering from anorexia. So you'd actually sanction. use that final sanction? Bullying, racism, I, trolling, we've dealt with all, all of that that's on illegal here. It's horrific. I absolutely, that's totally agree with you. It is scary, it is horrific. But then you'd start to look at the wider picture of free speech and whether or not ultimately the government would shut down Facebook. No, we hope we never, ever get to that point. But, you know, we have to put legislation in place which those platforms have to abide by to protect our children, mm. to make the UK the safest place in the world for our children to go online. We don't want pornographic images popping up on our children's phones or our screens unasked for and unbidden. Okay. We don't want our children taking their own lives because the algorithms know who they are, they know they're at home on their own on a Friday night and direct them into some very bad places. Well, as you said, we the, want that stop now. The rest of the world is watching. I hope it works because it's Thank essential you. that it does uh, because, as, as I said, we've dealt with so many of those issues on here and it is utterly heartbreaking and occasionally terrifying. So, you know, good luck. I hope it works. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.